hello everyone this is santosh um, in this video i'm going to explain to you about the basics of ethernet and the osi layers okay the seven osi layers um, uh, about ethernet okay so how ethernet frames traverse through all the seven osi layers okay so let's start so yeah so we will uh, go through the uh, introduction to ethernet and nomenclature how we represent the ethernet uh, in terms of speed and uh, the physical um, media to communicate and then the uh, all seven osi layers and their significance in with respect to the ethernet frames and then if any questions we can uh, discuss on the questions yeah so the first is introduction to ethernet ethernet is basically a computer networking technology okay so if you have two computers so how both the communicators are uh, how uh, these two computers or many computers communicate each other okay it is just a technology uh, in where uh, multiple computers can communicate okay so there are a variety of i mean different kinds of networks so we we are usually usually aware of this lan uh it's local area networks and man uh, metropolitan area networks and van okay so lan is basically a very small in size like um, uh, mainly used in intranets um uh, or in a office area so where we will be having minimal uh, nodes and um, uh, lan will be created man it is uh, in terms of a big city okay so uh, small lans are many uh, local area networks are connected together forms a man okay and then a connection of man uh, networks makes one okay it is like a intercontinental uh, connection okay so this is about the ethernet technology it was originally developed in uh, 1970 by a um, company called xerox okay so uh, there are uh, many versions of this ethernet uh, initially and uh, uh, later uh, there were some groups formed under ieee and uh, officially it was released as ieee 802.3 uh, spec in 1980 okay so that uh, from that onwards commercially this being started used in computers uh, one basic feature is uh, ethernet is point to point communication protocol okay so it is like uh, two nodes can communicate each other okay so it is not like a multi bus masters okay so all nodes cannot put the data at the same time okay so two nodes can put the data and one will be receiver another will be a transceiver okay so it is a point to point um, protocol communication protocol so the data rate it supported um, is from uh, nearly around 2.9 mbps to 400 uh, gbps okay with the different uh, technologies and uh, physical media used to achieve this high speed and different bit encoding methods are used to uh, transmit okay and the encoding bit encoding depends on the cable transmission capacity okay um, the physical media uh, which we use for ethernet communication is um, initially they started using coaxial cables okay and later they started with a twisted pair of uh, telephonic wires and then the fiber optics okay so with fiber optics they'll be able to achieve higher speeds okay so depending on the uh, physical media and its uh, frequency capacity or frequency bandwidth so they will define the bit encoding which bit encoding has to be used uh, and then uh, accordingly data is transmitted to achieve the higher speed yeah so here i have just collected the images of uh, different physical medium so first one is coaxial cable so this was a uh, earlier technology so now uh, we commonly see this uh, twisted pair uh, ethernet cable we call it as rj45 cable as well so our lan cable in layman term we call it yeah so this is very widely used uh, ethernet cable and um, we have uh, optical fiber cable okay so these are the three types of physical media i have just uh, uh, listed here and then showing the images so next comes with the nomenclature so 
how we define our uh, uh, name of ethernet's um, type of ethernet communication okay and what type of physical media is being used and what is the speed of that media and what is the um, encoding is being used okay so first we define the speed okay so so first term represents the speed of the connection in mbps okay if it is defined 10 it is 10 mbps if it is 100 100 mbps okay so then comes the base it is the baseband communication or broadband communication okay so here we will be having base or broadband and then we have um, um, a type of physical media okay so it is like if t is there it's a twisted telephonic wire okay and if f it is fiber optics cable and then we have x representation x is nothing but a type of encoding is being used okay so um, if it is x okay and then it will be like eight bits are encoded into 10 bits okay and um, r means four bits are encoded into five bits okay it's an encoding scheme used to represent the bits okay to achieve the synchronization because it's asynchronous communication so the bits which we transmit themselves will have to sync each other okay so that the bits we transmit they carry along with the synchronization data so here are some of the examples like uh, 100 base tx it is 100 base mbps with the two twisted pair uh, uh, physical media telephonic wire cables and x represents the bit encoding okay it is 8 bits are encoded into 10 bits Similarly, uh, 1000 base T4, it is like 1000 is the um, speed, and then T represents a twisted pair of telephonic wire, 4 represents the 4, um, um, what is a twisted pair, okay? So if it is 1, uh, it is like only one twisted pair of uh, cables are used. So here, if you see this one, so only um, one pair of cable is being used in this communication so this is like a modified um, uh, ethernet communication mainly used in automotive field okay they call it as brr originally uh, the broadcom started this activity so they started calling it as broad or reach okay so in short brr so this is about the nomenclature so here if you see um, uh, the OSI layer architecture. So we have um, seven layers. Okay, it is very generic one open system interconnect layers. Okay, in all the uh, systems, so the data has to travel through these seven layers. Okay, some systems may not be having all the layers, but this is a generic representation. Okay, so let's discuss um, Ethernet frames across all these seven layers. Okay, so the bottom most layer is a physical layer okay where we deal with the bits okay and the transceivers next is the data link layer so where we define a two nodes uh, link establishment okay we can uh, it's we can say like it's a link between two nodes okay and then here we deal with the entire frames and then next is a network layer um, in the network layer basically uh, we deal with the packets okay and it will be having IP address then we have a transport layer Transport is nothing but the um, uh, flow control uh, uh, is controlled over here in this layer. Basically, uh, transport layer consists of TCP or UDP protocols. Okay, and packet filtering also happens across these two uh, layers. Okay, depending on the IP and depending on the port. Okay, so packet packet filtering will happen here. So next comes the session layer. So session is basically to sync between the application. Um, it is basically uh, having ports okay send ports numbers uh, so that to create sockets okay so are establishing a, a session between two communicating nodes or application so on top of this we have a presentation layer so presentation layer is nothing but um, how we represent the data to application okay so mainly will be uh, encrypting or decryption of the data okay so those uh, things will be taken care by presentation layer. So last, the topmost is the application layer. So here is the, um, it's a end user layer where um, 
user can uh, send the data or what user can see here okay that will be displayed okay okay so let's go in depth and then understand what each layer uh, meant for with respect to ethernet communication okay so okay so here um, we will understand how ethernet packets are traversed okay so here we have a system a and system b okay so let's assume system a wants to send some data to system b okay so how data traverses okay let's assume we have a data at layer 7 layer 7 is the application layer okay so uh, this is the raw data which we want to send okay so the data sent to presentation layer so presentation layer what it does it does the encryption or format of the data okay so if you want to encrypt the data it will encrypt it and then it will send it to next layer okay and then here so this is the session layer okay it wants to create a socket or a port on which both the uh, nodes want to communicate okay it adds the ports detail here or it will create a socket in term i mean uh, it is like ip or port number okay so depending on the ip and port it creates a socket here it basically builds the connection then comes the uh, transport layer here the, here we will define whether we want to send the data in terms of udp or tcp that protocol we will define here okay so and we will add in each layer we are going to add a header a header will be having its own format okay every layer adds a header to its data okay here you can see the data whatever we are sending this header will be added okay so when you are sending the data every layer adds up a header okay so and then the the payload or the data becomes very bigger once it is received by other node it will start unpacking the data and then start decoding the data what exactly it is being sent okay so here we were at a transport layer and then um, it will go to network layer here okay in network layer we will define the ip to which ip i am going to send what is the source ip okay ip header will be added here and then the it will go to mac layer so in mac layer we are going to check the mac addresses source and destination mac addresses we are going to add that header here and then the last layer is physical layer where the bit encoding and the physical transmission basically electrical signals okay so once we have the complete frame okay it will be sent on to the physical uh, media so what we have already discussed whether it is the 100 mbps 1000 mbps okay so depending on the speed data will be traversing okay so first physical media decodes the data okay encoded data it will receive and it will stores in the um, uh, buffer we call it as complete frame whatever it has received and then next layer is the data link layer so data link layer will be having mac addresses so it will decode the mac addresses whether it is meant for me or not okay if i am the receiver it will receive it i mean it will um, analyze the header and it will send the the payload okay to next layer for decoding so next layer is the uh, network layer so in the network layer we will be having ip addresses it will check whether uh, it is for me or not okay so if it is destination ip is the system a's ip it will decode this header and it will send the data to next layer okay so next layer is uh, transport layer so if he has used tcp or udp accordingly the corresponding header is decoded okay and then data is passed to next layer okay so whatever we have added in each layer from system a who wants to send data so depending on the header details okay so the receiver will start unpacking and it takes necessary action okay whether to receive it or 
to discard it and if it is uh, proper data to be received he will send it to the next layer and then finally it will be sent to application okay so that will be visible in the application it is basically end user um, who will see this data okay so this is a high level how data travels through ethernet so okay so now we will see uh, each layer in depth so physical layer okay so physical layer is basically uh, deals with the transmission reception of raw bits okay raw streams over physical media okay so basically it is a pi chip okay so we call it as pi or a transceiver so who deals with the physical layer okay if it is a optical uh, fiber media how it has to be transmitted if it is like coaxial cable how data streams are to be transmitted what is the encoding scheme has to be used okay so all will be handled in physical layer then it defines the electrical and physical specification of the data connection okay so uh, the speed or electrical characteristics are defined in this physical layer so um, electrical cables optical fiber what media it has to be used the bit rate control okay at what rate i need to send and uh, the mode of the transmission like whether it is a simplex or uh, um, half duplex or full duplex okay and what is the network topology whether it is a bus topology or ring topology and um, main equipments are in this layer uh, are the hubs and cabling uh, whatever cables we use and repeaters so these devices comes under this layer okay um, this layer never concerns or never deal with the higher layers okay it is like a uh, dump guy whatever it receives from the higher layer he will just convert it to electrical signals and send it on to the network or a physical media okay so this is about physical layer so next top layer comes is the data link layer okay so data link layer is basically having the mac addresses okay so it it builds the link between two nodes okay so uh, it's like since mac address is um, uh, unique to uh, every node it's a physical address of every node so here it it is it, it builds the link okay because who is the source and who is the destination we will come to know only using the mac addresses so it builds the link between two connected nodes okay and provides node to node data transfer okay which node uh, is sending to uh, to the receiver node okay so it builds the connection the transmitter and receiver nodes it establishes or terminates the connection because um, in the data link layer we will be having a mac address okay if it is um, receiver if it is meant for that mac address he will receive that data and builds the connection or else it can terminate the connection okay and here we can control the uh, frame flow control as well okay so using checksum and all we will be able to control it and you can do the frame segmentation as well here in this layer okay and uh, we can control um, the errors as well here okay so ethernet frames have frames have checksums okay so if checksum is not matching okay whatever it is computed by the transmitter it will discard the uh, frame and it will generate an error like checksum error okay it will detect and correction of errors okay so the data link layer is again divided into mac okay media access control um, and llc logical link control okay so mac media access control is basically like um, uh, used to transmit uh, the data okay uh, get an access to the medium and permission to transmit the data okay so it is basically implemented by in a hardware okay um, in computer terms it is like nic uh, card so network interface card this is where mac will be there okay so and next we have a logical link control okay so which will be dealing with error checking and frame synchronization okay so this is a software part not a hardware implemented in a um, uh, software level okay so and it also acts as the link between the li uh, data link layer as well as the next um, network layer okay just understand that just remember that data link layer um, 
it builds the link between two nodes with a MAC address. So it is just a diagram representing um, the down we have OSI physical layer. These are the IEEE specs for different physical media. And then on top of that, we have a MAC layer. Okay. And then there are again IEEE specifications for a different MAC. Okay. Depending on the speed and uh, depending on the physical media. Okay. So, and then on top of that, we have a LLC layer. It's a logical link control layer. It's a software part which builds the link between data link layer and next um, network layer. Okay, next comes the network layer. So usually network layer is called as IP layer. Okay, so it will be having an IP address, a logical address. Okay, and um, this is basically used to uh, uh, traverse or send data between two networks, two different networks. Okay, it is not like point to point communication. Let's assume I want to send data um, to out of my network, okay, or between the uh, man, metro, whatever I've uh, shown at the beginning, right? So, LAN, man, van, okay. If you want to send data between two networks, IP will come into picture, okay. So, and this layer contains the IP address. Okay. The splitting of message data into segments can also happen here, but without delivery acknowledgement. Okay. So IP layer or network layer will not deal with the acknowledgement whether data is received by the receiver or not. He will not deal with that. He will just segment and send it to the send the data. Okay. As per the IP. Uh, since it has IP. The routing depends on this IP, whatever I have received, whether to route it to which port of the switch, okay, or can I route it or can I receive it, okay. So that depends on the this IP address to different networks. So next comes the transport layer, okay. So in transport layer, we usually see TCP or UDP protocols, okay. So TCP is the connection uh, oriented uh, protocol. UDP is uh, like um, uh, it will he will not deal with the connection. Okay, he will simply just send the data to destination. He will not deal with whether data is sent properly or not. TCP is much secured. So these two protocols fall into this uh, transport layer. Okay, and even um, the data segmentation and desegmentation will happen over here. Okay, so if you want to send uh, more than 1500 bytes of data okay so then uh, the data or bytes will be segmented over here and then sent to the network the again segregation i mean the assembly of the bytes or segments will happen at the receiver side so that is flow control is control i mean that is controlled in transport layer so controls the reliability of the given link through flow control that's what i've explained here okay so the data whatever it is segmented it will be sent with the session IDs or segmentation ID. Okay, those segments will be reassembled again at the receiver side. So there is acknowledgement for the data transmission. Okay, whatever data you have transmitted, receiver will acknowledge it. Okay, so that happens only in TCP connection, not in the UDP. Okay, it is connectionless uh, data transmission. Okay, he will not bother whether data is received or not. There is no acknowledgement in UDP. Then packet filtering happens. Um, here as well depending on the port okay so tcp or udp it will be having a port um, number if it is like um, receiving port is properly configured he will receive or else he will just discard it okay so as i said tcp or udp are the uh, two main protocols used in transport layer in ethernet then comes the session layer. So session layer basically establishes the connection and manages it and terminates the connection between the two local and remote applications. Okay. So if you want to, let's assume if you are, if you are using a, a UDP or TCP, okay, um, it will create a socket. Okay. This layer creates socket. Socket is nothing but it is combination of IP plus port number okay so this layer adds the port and the network layer adds the ip 
okay so depending on the ip and port it will create socket ids so these sockets are nothing but uh, these sockets are used to build the connection okay so sender will create a socket for every connection okay and then it will be creating each socket for every other receiving nodes okay so these sockets are basically used to maintain the connection man basically establishing managing and terminating the connection whenever you don't need that okay so two nodes can have multiple sockets okay uh, depending on the port okay let's assume i have multiple uh, applications running on different node i will be sending different data to different application okay then there will be multiple sockets created depending on the uh, port id okay so same ip destination ip is same uh, but i'll be using different port numbers okay so then different sockets will be created it is basically used to maintain the connection so implemented explicitly in application environments okay that use remote procedure calls okay this is basically to have um, uh, sessions okay sessions created and to have the remote uh, uh, what do you say procedure calls okay so basically sockets are unique uh, for that connection so it is basically used for uh, sorry um, implemented in application environments okay so as i said it contains the port address of the connection okay ports are the uh, main key point over here in the session layer so next sixth layer comes to the presentation layer so it is just below the application layer um, the presentation layer translates or decrypt the data or or uh, encrypt the data so how it has to be presented to the upper application layer from the lower session layer whatever it has been received okay so basically if needed while transmitting it can encrypt the data while receiving the same data will be decrypted also it is called a syntax layer so how the data syntax is maintained here so that has to be uh, defined over here okay what format it has to be sent what format let's assume syntax basically if you want to transmit union or structured data how it has to be laid down uh, in terms of the array of bytes okay so that syntax will be defined in this presentation layer the last layer is application layer okay it's an end user layer okay directly interact with the software application okay so here user will be interacting directly with the software application um, whatever data you see on the receiver side okay this is at this layer okay and it also deals with deciding the resource availability okay and identifying communicating partner deciding um, whom i need to uh, communicate and what is the my resource what is the physical media i do have currently okay and how do i synchronize what are the encryption algorithms i need to uh, use do i have resources or not okay and all those steps will be decided in this application layer okay examples are like html smtp uh, protocols okay these are all some application layer in automotive terms uh, we have um, some ip okay so that's main application layer protocol okay okay so that's it for uh, this video okay so i'll be creating next videos okay on the uh, ethernet um, if you have any questions with respect to this um, all osi layers please send your queries to this email id or else uh, comment on the uh, comment for this section uh, for this video i'll be answering those questions thank you